really like to just take out four or five and bring. Try to make some cones. If you've never removed a grease cap, here's how to do it. I'm just going to walk it off of there with a chisel under the lip. I don't want to drive the chisel in very far. And as it raises out, I can move the chisel back to keep the lip up on this edge here. And I should be able to pry it out of there momentarily. Might be loose now. There we go. Bent up the little bearing or the little uh, keeper there. Get this spindle off so I can measure for my special cones I need to make. This retaining washer out here. I'll be very careful to keep all this stuff very clean. Don't want any grit getting in my brand new wheel bearings. So far I'm stacking everything in the bearing cap. Get a bag and cover this so this stays clean. Particularly I know there's a rainstorm coming. And there's going to be a lot of blowing. I don't want grit up off of the driveway. Hey, looky there. don't want grit up off the driveway getting on my axle, which has got grease on it, which would be sticky and collect everything that touched it. So we've got that protected good now. Next trick is i got to get this bearing and seal out of here and try not to damage the seal. I may have to buy new seals. Here's a chunk of metal I can make one of my cones out of. This is some kind of collet. There's a thread and a taper here. I don't know, some kind of custom adapter somebody made for something. It's just in my scrap pile. Now I'm concerned about which chunk falls off here first. So I'm probably not going to finish the cut with the cutoff. I'll probably finish it. Get ready for this Bob Mullins with a hacksaw. So that I can... Uh, really see what's going on and not have a big chunk of something flipping around on the leg. Lower the speed to the minimum. The interrupted cut on a cutoff tool. Boy, I got that cutoff tool hanging out there a lot. Maybe I can pull it in some, I don't know. Take my time. Seems to be getting a good cut. I'm seeing that next time I go to the scrap yard, I need to get some. Uh, stock in the two, two and a half, and three inch diameter range. I got stuff under two and I got stuff four inches. Okay. It's an interesting way to look at a thread, isn't it?
saw Kerf in there. Terrible cut. That's a little better, I guess. Found my chip brush. Temporarily misplaced it. I'm going to drill this hole out to just under three quarters. And then I've got a three quarter inch ream in my collection. Luckily, I got a problem though, and that's how am I going to hold on to a three quarter inch drill bit or a uh, near three quarter inch drill bit? I have to see if I have one with a cut down shank, or I might have to show a secret tool that I have. Mm. I might have a might have a drill bit with a number two paper on it I can use. I have to look at that. There we go. There we go. Now I'm through. So the next size bit. Now we're going to half inch after, I think that was a little over three eighths. We're going to slow this puppy down. There we go, we're through. Now we got to go to secret girl bits. Alright, I found two 23 32nd bits. I would love to have a 47 64 so my ream has to take out the minimum amount of material, but I can't find one. A little bit chowdered up here. Took a stone to it. Let's see if I can get it to lock in the chuck. may just take. Probably going to have to slow this beast down. Let's give this speed a try. Alright, let me show you what I want to do here. I want to seat the uh, seat it better. I'm going to put this piece of wood up against my Acme screw and then strike it with this piece of metal. So it's hard to smack the drill bit in stoutly enough because you're afraid you're going to cut yourself.
No, it's not turning. Oh. There we go. Have to push it a little too hard. You only do so much with the number two Morris taper. Ah, uh, you're always, always aspiring, aspiring upward. You can do this job so much faster with a bigger lathe than number three tailstock. I've got my 10 and 12 inch lathe now. And I can see where I might want to replace the 12 with the 14. And I don't even have a 12 running. And I'll wait a good long time for a really good deal on a 14 in great condition. Most of those you see that are worth owning seem to be in the, I don't know, $4,000 and up range. I ain't spending $4,000. A lot of these tapered drill bits came from two deals. One, I bought a bunch of them from um, the same guy that had the uh, Desert Camo. I'm sorry. Actually, I bought a lot of them from the guy that I got this lathe from down in Cincinnati. And I got another box that included a bunch of tapered, a bunch of more number two tapered drill bits, big drill bits, along with a vintage drill press down in uh, Cincinnati. And that's the vintage drill press that you see uh, next to my Craftsman toolbox. I think we're just about through since we ran out of RAM travel. Makes a lot more sense to slide the tailstock back and forth than run the RAM in and out. Starting to get a little bit of heat on it. There we go. Next procedure is the ring. Look at that, Mama. 750. 5.8 shank. Now, guess what the next step is, boys and girls? You guessed it. We're going to go to back gears. So we engage the back gear, pull the pin. Now we're going super slow. Look at that. Let's put plenty of juice on this. See how our ring cuts. Possibly be going a little faster. Let's speed it up a little bit. That looks like a good speed for a three quarter inch ring.
That, boys and girls, is how you drill a big hole. Several steps, work your way up. Really would have liked to have stopped the 64th short of it, not the 32nd. Really shouldn't be drilling with a ream. I'm kind of drilling here. Okay, just not ideal. Perfect world, I'd like to take not, you know, 64 is about 16 thou. Really like to just take out four or five and ring. There it is. One three quarter inch hole, approximately two and a quarter inches deep. Let's take a half-ass measurement at it. Got 751.5 there. Plenty close enough for a wheel. Let's try our shaft in it. See how she fits. Boy, it's a close fit. It's a tight fit. I may have some debris in there or a bump on the shaft. We may have to run that ream in there a little longer. Just make sure I ran it all the way through. Feels like it's not really all the way through. Oh yeah, it's all the way through. Yeah, I probably got a little burr or something right here. We'll work on this shaft. I think we got a good hole here. Well, I think it's time to call it an evening.